welcome to another edition of Entrepreneurs in Fuego. We're documenting the journey of amazing entrepreneurs like Pat Honeyotis. Perfect. Thank you. See, I, I just, yeah, it just worked on your... It yeah, just, rolled right off your tongue like you knew what you were saying, right? <laughs> <laughs> I fake it real well, man. I tell you. <laughs> I love your hair, man. What's, thank you. What's, thank you. How do you come up with that? It was. It's just fun. And, you, like, and you know what? What happens is that you match. You yeah. match the background, and I think that that's what happened. <laughs> you went to our side. You saw I did. this, and you figured out. I'm, I'm gonna. I I'm, I'm just gonna get my hair like yep, that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to make sure I fit in right here. Oh, you fit perfectly. <laughs> Pat, thank you so much for being our oh, guest. Thank you. Tell us a little bit more about what you do. You know, mostly I work with women. I work with gents, but mostly women. And I work with women that are really pretty successful. Okay. You know, they're, they're not wanting any more money. But what they want is more time. And they want to be able to enjoy the money that they're making. And these women are working 70, 80 hours a week. And then they go home and do whatever they do there. And it's, they lose the dream of their business. Why are they not making more time for themselves? I mean, that's, that's because, my logical uh, well, uh, thought right now. It's because they haven't been taught to. Women traditionally have never been taught to make time for themselves. You know, you're the mother, you're the wife, you do for everybody else, and then you open a business on top of that. The women that I've been working with, it never occurred to them to put themselves on a schedule because it's not anything they grew up with. It's not part of their environment. Well, I will tell you that neurologically though, women, you know where I'm going with this. Yep. Women are, and this is since the beginning of time, Women, and again, this is this is just neurological. It has nothing to do with uh, uh, with with being sexist or anything yep. like that. But neurologic, women tended to the household. Women yes. were taught to do a multiple task yes. thing, where men we have to finish one task and to go to another yes. one. So neurologically, we're we're different. Yes, absolutely. That's why when people say to me, why don't you work with men? Well, I do work with men, but I work primarily with, because it's different. How I work with a gentleman around this, it's very different on how I work with a woman. And you, you lose the word, you use the word gentleman very generously. Well, there are those. <laughs> There's a few of us left. <laughs> yes, there are. There are. There are quite a few, actually. Yeah, good, few. good. But, see, right. but, but, it, but they have never been taught to, that it's okay to, be, to look at things the way perhaps a gentleman does. And so, how do you go by teaching them? Wow, it's a process. First of all, mostly it's about giving permission, okay? It's about giving them permission through modeling an example, right. but then teaching them how to give themselves permission to have it all. Teaching them how to give themselves permission to take some time off. And is that so hard, to yeah. give yourself permission to do it something? Is, it is for some people, yes, because you have to understand I'm almost 69 years old, all right? So I've had all these years, these decades of being taught it's not okay. Everything else comes first. And so it's about retraining these women, absolutely. And it's, they're not stupid, they're brilliant. Of course, I mean, they're, okay? they've, they, they're successful in their own right. Uh, yes. They've gone through, you know, their cycles and, yes. and, and, and maturity, they've got the yes. kids and everything else, and, and now it's time for them to you enjoy their success. You got it. And it's really fun to work with some of the younger women because I get them early. And so they don't have to go through all these years of... How receptive are they, though? Um, well, they come to me. So that's, that's one step. Okay. Okay, so that's one thing. And then I have those that come to me and think they're ready and go, oh, I can't do that. Really? And I go, oh, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. And then it's about, sometimes I have to give them permission first. But if they're ready for it, they're ready for it. And they fly with it. Do, do you find... <laughs> Do you find that sometimes maybe, you know, you know a friend that just needs an intervention? <laughs> <laughs> do you get some of those? Yes, and I don't do that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't do interventions because they're not open and, uh, and receptive to it. Yeah, that's okay? right. They, they don't see it themselves? Exactly. 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 They have to come to me. At what point, though, they, do they realize, this is what I need? I mean, do they break it's, out? Of, it's kind of like working with an alcoholic. And I used to work with alcoholics, so I get this. And actually, I had a friend that worked with, and he's the one that taught me this. You have to get to the point to where you lost your wife, you lost your dog, um, the house is gone, the car broke down, and you're laying in the gutter. And so, similarly, that's where they have to be. They have to be so tired 
of not having any time for themselves, so tired of always being interrupted with family time that they, they've just had enough. They have to reach that point. And that's why I asked you that question is because it sounded to me, everything that you're describing right now, it sounds to me like an attic. It is. It absolutely is. The it's similarities are they're just amazing. Absolutely. They're uncanny. Yeah. Absolutely. It's codependence. It is. And, 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 entirely. And codependence, as far as I'm concerned, this is just my opinion, is probably one of the worst addictions there is, psychologically. Are most of these women in a particular age group? Not necessarily. The women I work with now are probably between the ages of 35 and 60. So, you know, you're, you're real younger ones, they really haven't established business and, right. and that yet. Um, I find it more in the older women, of course, because, you know, we've been at it longer and we were taught less. Okay, this, is, this is about your journey. How do you get into this business, <laughs> Pat Honey B, with the beautiful hair? <laughs> How do you get into this business, man? Yeah, no, I, I like fell into it, okay? I've done, you know, I, I started out as a school teacher, okay? And then I went into counseling because I was high school special ed, and this was in the 70s when uh, it was brand new. I'm old, man, okay? And nobody wanted to work with our kids because they were different. So I thought, well, I'm going to go get my degree in counseling, and then I've never worked with one, okay? And it, it just picked up, and it was just a, it was a step-by-step -step journey. And I've always done things that were just a little bit, not quite on the mainstream. I went into, I'm a board certified medical hypnoanalyst, and then I went into all the, the energy work, and it just keeps growing. I just keep stepping into it, and then it just happens. I know that doesn't give people step by step, but that's what happens. How does, uh, you learned all this thing on, on your own and based on your experiences and, and seeing yeah, yeah. the need, right? Yeah, I yeah. mean, there is no degree in college <laughs> no. for what you do. No. No. And, and, and let me tell you something, and that is the, the, the instance of, uh, of what we do of entrepreneurship. Because anybody watches this today, right? They're going to go, you know what, in my curriculum here at my college or, or in the community college or ASU, yes. they don't teach this. No. But there is this lady with a beautiful hair <laughs> that matches my wall. <laughs> This is going to be all about the hair on the wall, isn't it's, it? <laughs> it's, oh, you have no idea. I mean, I'm just mesmerized by it. Mine is falling off. Yeah, man. I see that. I well, see thank that. You. you don't have to agree with me. <laughs> Heard my feelings. But then they can call you and say, you know what? You are inspiring me to go into that particular field. Because who, who else do you know that does what you do? <laughs> You're the first person that I've met that does that. I'm kind of the first person I've met that does that. Right. It, yeah, you just have to be open. It's basically what it boils down to. You know, um, if, if my college, my, my master's degree professors saw me doing what I was doing today with clients, they would roll over in their graves <laughs> because it just, it is so anti what it was supposed to be, okay? But it's just about being open and going, hey, that looks like fun, and not only that, you can help people. Did you give yourself permission oh, absolutely. to do this? Absolutely. And, in all honesty, I still have to give myself permission to do things so and to be all that. Yes. So it doesn't end, right? Not as be far as I'm concerned. Because it might be that you travel this journey, you work with this particular individual, and she is at the level where she's given herself permission, she's doing well, but life doesn't stop. No. It continues. And so there's an interesting set of challenges Well, it's kind future. of like, here's, the, here's where I come from. I climb the mountain, right? Yeah. Because I want what's at the top. Yep. And I get up there and I go... <laughs> yes, I did it. Push oh. myself off. Right? I thought I was the only one that kissed himself. <laughs> <laughs> and then I look up and I go, and now I want that one. Yeah. And, there's, and then it's, but if you're willing to do that, anybody can do that, but you have to have the openness and the heart for it. And you can teach that. No, you cannot teach it. Kind of what I do is remind people of who they are. So that's already there and we just kind of bring it out of them. How do you measure this? Uh, I mean, how... If you find a way, honey, let me know. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't know how to measure. All I know that when I see the light come on in their eyes, I don't care what the measurement is. They've got it and they're living it. Fair enough. And, yeah. that, is, and, that, is, and, and yeah. that is the sign and that is, that is proof enough, if you will, that whatever you did with them worked. Yeah. And, and see, here's the other thing. It's not about proving. I get nothing to prove. 
There is nothing to prove. True. And when we let go of proving something, it is a piece of cake. What's the best um, advice that you ever received? Wow. Boy, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I can't answer that. How about this? How about the best advice that you will ever give? Be who you are. Love yourself first and go for it. And when you're that, when you do that, that it's, you can't do anything but go for it. And just have one heck of a lot of fun on the way. Because it is fun when you let go of all this garbage. You know, you can lead me anywhere. <laughs> Because you're, you are that type of person, you have that personality, and to do what you do, you have to be able to look beyond the pain that you see in that particular individual. Yeah. Otherwise, you, you, you probably have a tendency to just go into that pain yourself and be part of that. Yeah, see, that doesn't work. And see, I'm really right. blessed. I'm really right. blessed. My guidance in that shows me people who are they are at yep. their core. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's amazing. And when you can see that, that's the only thing you can see. And then it's just about teaching them how to get there. That's You're all amazing. there is. You're amazing. <laughs> You're an amazing woman. Thank you. The only problem is that you were just too young for me. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the purple hair. I have to cover with the purple hair. <laughs> You're such an amazing woman. And I tell you, um, this interview, when somebody sees... Uh, what you have to offer, you will inspire a lot of women. I Good. know that. I know That's that the whole it. idea. It's just about inspiring. It's just about teaching people that you exist. I didn't know you existed. I didn't know that this was even possible to, to just share with women what you have. Yes. Because that's what you're doing. And you're oh, educating them. And you're just, hey, come on. You can give yeah. yourself permission to do this, and to, to be the mother, to be the professional, to be the woman that you want to be. Give yourself permission to be yourself. And give yourself permission to have it all. It's okay to have it all. You're an awesome person. <laughs> I'm telling you. My, my only regret right now is that we have such a, much, such a very little time for this interview. It's fine. Thank but you. I appreciate you, and thank you so much. And I definitely want you back because you make me feel good. You make me inspired. You know, it's just beautiful. It's the okay. hair. Thank you very much. <laughs> and with that, fun. it was fun? It was Did fun. Did you have fun? Oh. I had a great time. <laughs> And with that, we're out. <laughs>